Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I wanna talk about my top three favorite options that you could set in Power BI Desktop. Stay tuned. Power BI Office, lots of options. You can set so many different options and settings in the desktop. And I just wanted to do a video to talk about my, my favorite three, my top three, right? My top three. So you guys know what I like to do. Instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. Option number three, number three on the list, query reduction, right? And so as a former DBA, I, I can feel the pain of DBAs around the world when someone sets up query reduction and it's constantly just sending queries back and forth, back and forth to the database unnecessarily, especially when there's a way to stop it. So my number three option is query reduction. How you set it up, you click file, you go to options and settings, click options, and instead of accepting the default, right? Every time I select a slicer or a filter or another element, cross highlighting happens, you can use query reduction to say disable cross highlighting. Before you run the queries for that slicer, click the apply button. Before you run the queries for that filter, click the apply button. Go ahead and click okay. And so now you see, oh, look, there's a little apply button. And then if I go here, we have another apply button, right? And so the first thing, right, I wanna talk about with query reduction is it disables cross highlighting. So if I click here, right, nothing changes. If I click here, nothing changes, okay? And so it all stays the same. The only way, it kinda of looks like this is adjusting, but it's really not, all right? And so the, it all stays the same. The only way you can um, enable cross highlighting, and if you click here, you go to format, you choose edit interactions, and then you enable it, right? You can set up filtering or highlighting if you want. I'm not turning either on, all right? And then as far as the slices and the filters go, normally when you click an element, when, in the, when you choose an item in the slicer, it automatically sends the query back. Well, it's delayed. You have to, it will not send it until you press apply. So when I press apply, all the queries will get sent back to the database and everything will happen then, all right? Same thing with the filters. All right, what do you guys think? That's pretty cool, that's number three. What about number two? Well, you guys know I have a serious pet peeve about data silos. I hate them, I hate data silos. And what those data silos ha give people the ability to do is data is dispersed everywhere and they're probably just exporting that data, putting it in Excel, putting it in other visualization tools. Well, I've spent all my blood, sweat, and tears creating this data model. So option number two is disabling export. Let me show you. So take this report for example, right? I've designed a beautiful data model for it and I don't want anybody exporting my data, exporting my data. So all you need to do is go to file, options and settings, options, go down to the report settings and you'll see a little section for export data. You can limit it to just summarize data. You can allow them to export both the detail and the summarized data, but this is my favorite option right here. Don't allow them to export anything. That's right, right? Nothing. Come to me if you need a new measure, a new calculated column, if the logic is wrong. We fix it in one place, then everybody else gets the benefits of that fix. That's what I'm talking about, right? So disable, click this, don't allow, publish the report out to the service, and then head over to the service and watch this. If I click this little table right here, nothing, no export. If I click this little bar chart right here, nothing, no export just the way I like it. All my data stays where my data belongs, right? In my central repository. All right, that's number two. Number three, query reduction. Number two, can't export anything. What's number one? I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Number one, just like so many things Adam and I do on this YouTube channel, we stumbled across this. I stumbled across this when I was working on a project recently and I was like, oh man, I gotta do a video on this. And Adam was like, you should do a video on your top three favorite options. So this is number one, check it out. I'm not gonna reveal it until you see what it is. Let's head back to my laptop. All right, so over in the desktop, I build this report and when I click right here, look what happens to all of the other elements on the report right? It's like they gray out, but there's actual values there, but I really can't see what's in the bar chart. It's because it's doing cross highlighting and not filtering. And by default, most of the times I want it to filter. The only way to do it is again, you go to format, you go to edit interactions, then you can set each one. You could change it from highlight, 
to filter. That is not efficient, right? So instead, there's a little feature, check this out. If you go to File, Options and Settings, Options, so many things. Scroll down to the bottom to Report Settings and look at there. Change default visual interactions from cross highlighting to what? Boom, filtering just the way I like it. So in one fell swoop, all of my elements will be filtered instead of highlighted. This is great. This is bananas. Another little thing that they snuck in. Not quite sure when, but I like it. So let me show you what happens. So we're gonna go ahead and check it. Click OK. And now watch this. Watch the magic when I choose something now. Watch what happens to all of my bar charts. It's actually revealing the amount for the bar that's relative to actually what that amount is. You see? So as, as I click, everything is filtered down instead of just highlighted. This is great. This is bananas. I love it, right? This is my number one favorite feature. What do you guys think? Are you using any of these options today? Let me know. Let's continue the conversation where? In the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, give me a big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.